Hello, this is Eileen, the environmental educator, and in this video, uh, we're going to talk about our buddies over there at the World Economic Forum, Klaus and his uh, fun friends. Um, I, this, this today, I just opened up a browser and and saw this headline: WEF speaker warns every time we drink coffee, we're putting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Well, you know, Einstein. Um, you should know that every time we do anything, we put CO2 into the atmosphere, including breathing, including, you know, this guy's high-end life, <laughs> okay, and all of his friends' high-end life. But um, th this was put out two months ago, I think two months ago. Today is March 20th, 2024. I mean, May 20th, 2024. And um, this was January 24, 20, um, January 30th, 2024. Um, the same thing. You know, is it time to give up your daily brew? Uh, I mean, that that's really what they want. You will have nothing and be happy. Um, but right here, uh, this New York Post off um, our New York Post article says, uh, well, you know, uh, hands off, <laughs> okay. And this was uh, January twenty fourth, twenty twenty four. And this article is the snarkiest. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll like this the best, but um, you know, they, they. I mean, it, it's just because the, these guys that they, they care so much. I, I mean, they just want to do good for the world. And um, you know, they, they, it's estimated that um, nearly um, three in four Americans drink coffee every day, and, and it's not just um, Americans; it, it's worldwide. Okay, but this um, came up during a panel discussion at the um, at Davos. Okay, where Hu Hubert Keller highlighted a crucial yet often overlooked issue for coffee drinkers, and and that, you know, you really shouldn't be doing it because um, it, it's emitting carbon dioxide. You know, but you know, people say these are a bunch of elitists. Um, you know, out of touch billionaires that are <laughs> proclaiming this to us, but um, you know they'll they'll do anything to convince the public. And the, um, the where this came up, the panel discussion was uh, putting a price on nature, you know. And um, he says he says you know that this is um, you know a, a critical issue. And that coffee aficionados, um, you know, should consider, especially if they're concerned about the quality of their brew, you know, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, last week, two weeks ago, I did a video about synthetic coffee, you know, and um, I think this is where they're taking you here. But, um, you know, he, he cares about the coffee plantations. And uh, with most of the coffee is produced through monoculture and monoculture is affected by climate change. Oh, oh, isn't everything. And, you know, he added that the quality of these natural resources are quietly, um, rapidly deteriorating. And the end of this Yahoo article says that um, that deterioration is as a study modeling study predicts that by 2050, approximately half the land currently used for cultivating high quality coffee could become unproductive as a result of climate change. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? Um, cute could be is a key word there. And, you know, people don't care about by the year 2050, <laughs> maybe 26 years from now. Oh, I won't be alive to hear it. You know, pe people don't care about that. Okay. They, they just care if they're happy right now. But, um, you know, they say, that there's over um, 2.25 billion cups of coffee are consumed glo globally each day, a and that this is a 250 billion um, market globally. So yeah, and um, you know they they care about that because um, most of the coffee growers uh, live below the poverty line, right? They they talk about you know the the farmers and but. Um, they they just want your your way of life. You will have nothing, and you will um, be happy with it. And yes, they they are coming for your coffee. So this article was out here. Um, this one it says that this guy Keller um, is a senior managing partner at Swiss private bank, 
And, um, yeah, so, so that would, he would know a lot about the environment. That, that's, that's what bankers are known for. But, um, he says that the coffee we drink emits between 15 and 20 tons of carbon dioxide per ton of coffee. And we should all know that. And, um, yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, you know, we should so that we just use coffee responsibly and, and so that we don't, you know, just take it for granted and, and we don't just throw it out like we throw everything out. And, and they, they even brought up, you know, that the production of the sugar, you know, has emissions too, 241 kgs for um, each ton of sugar. And, and then they, they talk about um, a single glass of milk, 250 millimeters, um, generates an equivalent of 0.8 kg of CO2, which is comparable to driving a car um, 3.8 kilometers. Oh, okay. So what, is, is Keller and Friends, or are they not having um, sugar and, and cream in their coffee? You know what we have to do? We have to use this responsibly. We have to take the sugar that we need and not throw out two, three amount of what we used. <laughs> you know, you get a packet of sugar. People laugh at me. Like if I'm in a place and, you know, there's a packet of sugar and I just use a little bit of it, I'll, you know, just fold it up so that it doesn't leak out. And they, they just laugh. I'm like, I'm not abusing it. I'm just not throwing un perfectly good stuff. It's not just the sugar. It's the packaging. It's the transportation packaging. It's all the transportation that that sugar went through that you're throwing out. Okay. And that is, if we just ended our abuse, we would um, be solving problems. And you know what they didn't talk about when they were talking about how abusive um, coffee is? Is that how many people to this day, no matter how much they've heard, like, you know, don't do disposable, um, drink it out of a disposable cup and lid. And, and then a, a sleeve that goes over it. And then there's, you know, a plastic stirrer that goes in so that you can stir your coffee and your cream and your sugar. Okay? They didn't mention any of this in his little talk here. He's, he's just going uh, against the coffee itself. But this, um, this New York Post article, th this is the snarkiest, um, you know, they, um, they, um, a, a bunch of ex users besieged <laughs> the, this video that this guy, okay, it was a, a clip which was shared, um, on X and it racked up over 3 million views. And, um, you know, people just <laughs> said they warned they're coming for your coffee, but they, they had a few other, um, things to say uh, about this, which, which all makes a, a lot of sense. And, um, but before we get to that, one thing it says here is that, um, the, hey, you know, this guy and the panelists, um, talked about how there's an opportunity to reorganize the coffee industry. Yeah, the $250 billion market industry, but to reorganize it. Okay. That reorganization, I think, is that synthetic coffee. And, um, so the, the tech journalist, Tim Hinchcliffe, he, um, originally posted the clip, okay, and he interpreted Keller's um, points to mean that coffee growers are going to be stripped of their livelihoods by massive corporations or replaced with synthetic coffee. You know, he said um, they're going after coffee farms. When he says production is fragmented, he is saying it has yet to be captured by corporations and centralized. These co The coffee farmers in the globalist term Global South are going to be stripped of their livelihoods in the name of climate justice. Yeah, well, you know, I'm surprised climate justice, they're not just demanding that we, you know, just give these coffee farmers more and do i think that people should be living in poverty you know going out and providing a product to the world no <laughs> you know guess what people will buy your coffee if it's a little more okay you give yourself a a living wage we're not asking you to live in poverty so 
Um, you know, but everything has to be about climate justice and Klaus and friends like that too. Um, so wide awake media, right. And said, yep, they're, they're coming for your coffee. There, there's some other people that said some things here. Um, author and scientist Gad Sad. <laughs> he um shared a sarcastic response, you know, saying pets, you know, cars, having children, um eating meat, gas stoves, you know, and, and now coffee, uh, okay? Um but but um down there somebody making a sense down there in Australia, an Aussie politician, Malcolm Roberts, uh he rebuked Keller and the elites and um you know he said hands off our coffee. The elitists at Davos love to chat about restricting travel while you know comparing the private jets they flew in on. They push EVs, yet the Davos limos are fuel-powered. The forum um, sessions openly plot to reduce animal farming and fishing, yet they dine on the finest steak and seafood. You know, where do we draw the line? I, I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe if, you know, <laughs> especially it would just be so nice if Americans would actually um, be Americans and, and use their voice. But you know what? Um, it, it, the problem is, is... People, people don't really even think that we have to draw a line because this is all just chalk. It, it's all just chatter. Like, it's not going to happen. Oh, oh, my God, it's not going to happen. You know, people don't realize that the Iron Curtain is down. It's It's been down for a very long time. They just haven't locked it down yet. Uh, okay? And, and that's going to happen. And, and when it happens, <laughs> good, right, good luck if they let you have your coffee. When the only thing we have to do is just, you know, be responsible with our coffee, drink it out of a responsible cup. Make sure you don't throw it away. Okay, don't throw the sugar, don't throw the milk. Use what, what you need and, and don't waste what you don't need. It, it's just very simple. That in itself is the solution because you know what? Everything contributes to our global problems, no no matter if it's, you know, a benign cup of coffee. Everything contributes in a lot of different ways. The packaging, okay, the transportation of, of this, I mean, it, it all contributes. It, it's tires, it's oils, it's, you know, planes, it's, it's everything that, that people say they don't want. But this is why it's here. And we can have our coffee, but, you know, we would probably be putting um, less of a demand on coffee growers and people, people that, you know, get sugar and the people that give you your cream for your coffee if we just didn't keep abusing and throwing out what we don't need. It's very simple. And <laughs> at economic collapse, um, people are going to start doing that. But right here, ending our disposable society, and this cup down here, I, I can't believe they didn't bring that up, but <laughs> I, I guess the, the banker didn't get that in his talking point. So they're coming for your way of life, people. And the, the problem is, you know, like this Aussie politician, you know, where do we draw the line? <laughs> First of all, you have to actually make people think that there's a line that needs to be drawn and most people just don't even get it. So stay tuned, people.